Hello everyone and welcome to the All Things ITSM Global Podcast. I'm Kirsty McGowan and I'm here with King Gonzalez. Hi Kirsty. Carlos Casanova. Kirsty. And our guest today is Dennis Droxeth from Enterprise Management Associates. Well, oh. thank you, Kirsty. Yeah, good, good. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah, so we're welcome, Dennis. To have you. Yeah. And it's great to see you, Dennis, again. Yeah, so, great to see you thanks again. Thanks for taking the time. Be here. And, mm-hmm. So I understand you've done a little research recently on the future of ITSM and mm-hmm. what's coming down the pike. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So IT service management, which is really pretty appropriate, I guess, mm-hmm. for... Uh, where we are here, in service now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought we just accidentally showed up. Yeah, we did actually. It was a parachute came in yeah. from the ceiling. Um, my hunch was, and the data actually proved largely true. You never know, right? The data mm-hmm. could yeah. be embarrassing, yeah. and you could look like an idiot. True. That didn't happen. So, um, my hunch was that there are sort of two tracks for ITSM: a progressive track and a sort of uh, besieged, uh, you know, Alamo kind of uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, losing battle track. Right. Yes. And by and large, that was what the data showed. And it mm-hmm. showed that more ITSM teams than I thought were on, at least in some way, on the progressive track. Right. So what constitutes that progressive track? And this is also mm-hmm. timely, I guess, given our, mm-hmm. you know, where we are. Um, Integrated operations. Right. The top four strategic priorities for this progressive track were integrated operations for incident and problem management. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sound familiar? Yeah. Integrated operations for user experience management for internal right. customers. Mm-hmm. Integrated operations for change and configuration management. There was a fourth that I forget, but it was tied almost with integrated operations for user experience management for external. Right. Right from uh, okay. for uh, partners or for customers or for, and so um, one of my little, uh, what's the word? You know, mm-hmm. mini passions here is to get uh, ServiceNow to be the first vendor on earth to recognize that user experience management is not a subset of application performance management, <laughs> but a global way of unifying the business with IT. Yeah that requires a unified fabric between the service desk operations, actually in development, and the executive suite. Right. So that's, uh, what else? Oh, um, good news also, they were twice as likely, if you were very successful in your uh, ITSM initiatives, twice as likely to have a CMDB deployed. Mm-hmm. You were almost, if you were not successful, you were in the really bottom group, you were 20 times less likely to have application discovery and dependency mapping deployed. Oops. Well, that's what the data said. Mm-hmm. You know, data is a little bit, but that's how it came out. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So it was a good, um, you know, among other things. So, oh, and oh, another um, big data for IT and analytics. You know, everybody yeah. calls it IT op- mm-hmm. uh, operations analytics. No. It's really a shared resource between ITSM, operations, development, and the executive suite. And the use cases are varied. Um, so I've always claimed it was a misnomer, although when we did our research on analytics, we called it advanced operations analytics, because otherwise people wouldn't know what we were talking about. But then we looked at it and said, you know, it's not about operations just. It's really about this broad capability to mine data and understand interdependencies. And service modeling and analytics turned out to be a really powerful combination. Right. The other thing that was surprising, and I'll you know, pause and <laughs> change the subject, uh, was in, uh, Agile DevOps and ITSM. Uh, a striking growth in mm-hmm. a move to integrate change management, development, uh, how are they doing it, scheduling, of course, uh, of some levels of automation in terms of workflow. Uh, CMDB provisioning is actually on the rise to support development. Uh, and feedback, you know, we did this application, so what did people say about it? How is it being used? Is it relevant? Wow, they're actually yeah. asking that. Yeah. Yeah. Novel idea. What I got, <laughs> yeah. So those were the, some of the highlights, and um, I was delighted that, you know, I could share them with ServiceNow. Yeah. Well, and if user experience is an important <clears throat> aspect to what people are considering, certainly getting feedback about applications mm-hmm. that have been deployed seem very reasonable. 
Are there any things that you're seeing uh, that you're advising clients, especially based on this recent research, about things that are commonly misunderstood or things that they need to get cleaned up that they're just not thinking right in terms of the approach? Yeah. Um, so some of the things that would naturally come out of that, of course, the user experience management is a thing that's commonly misunderstood, although I think more by vendors than by IT mm -hmm. because of the way the markets have been defined. Yeah. Right. Um, but it is one thing that I work on. Um, we did a book on CMDB deployments called CMDB Systems Making Change Work in the Age of Cloud and Agile. It just came out mm -hmm. on Elsevier. Yeah. Very journalistic. There are some mm -hmm. There's a Q&A that actually came from um, uh, Knowledge 12 or 11 or whatever from New Orleans, mm -hmm. but it was made anonymous and yeah. I guess I shouldn't have said that, right? So now, <laughs> you, now you'll have it's to strike like that. that. Yeah, yeah. It actually came from an interview we did in uh, you know Lithuania many years ago. No. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, um, uh, very journalistic, very looking at deployment. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I think one thing that I feel is really key, and whether it's a CMDB initiative or uh, another kind of service-centric initiative or even an agile initiative, <clears throat> is uh, I, my phrase is abhor the generic. People ask me, what's the generic answer to, you know, how many people should, how many uh, angels should dance on the head of a pin or something like that? I say, you know, you're asking for a generic number. I, then I ask them if they're generic and if they know anyone who is and if their IT organization is generic. Yeah. So, so dialogue is key. We, um, one of the little anecdotes, something I think Carlos would appreciate. Mm -hmm. Our requirement is generally to do at least 20 stakeholder interviews associated with their deployment. Mm -hmm. right. Understand, and, and not to force them into uh, a sort of prison of context, but to hear what they have to say, yeah. to socialize what we think is the initiative, to learn from them, and actually to learn what they think about their other stakeholders, right. and then to document you know, their priorities. So we went into one environment, and this was a few years ago, and the CIO said, oh, you don't need to do any of those. I sent an email out last week, so it's all set. You know? So we said, no, How about we have out? to do yeah. that. We came back, we did the 20 interviews, and he said, hmm, could you do 40 more? Yeah. It's, I mean, along that, along that line, I'm curious, you know, you said that the original results came back. And they actually segregated the internal user experience and the external mm -hmm, user experience. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know they're two different populations. But part of me, you know, when we talk and we, we see where things are going, we're trying to blend, you know, it's just a user experience. Sure. And a little bit more gray in terms of so that it just handles, because some of those people are internal during their eight to five but they're actually customers of that same vendor, so they're an external later. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious as to how that data kind of showed that it's, it's internal and external and how different the experience is supposed to be from that different population. It varies, of course, by vertical and okay. by use case. Again, I'm always a use case, you know, just like sure. a CMDB yeah. should be use case yeah. driven. Right. Um, UEM will be as well. So if you look at UEM and customer, you know, the user experience and customer experience management team. Okay. And then there are gray areas like the partner experience and the supplier right. experience. Mm -hmm. and, right. You know, if you're a service provider, your client experience, right? right. Which, that's another high growth area of, uh, uh, um, there'll be a segregation, I think, between the commodity service provider and the, uh, and the uh, more partner oriented um, service provider. But, uh, so the teams are going to be different. Like, for instance, you know, in the classic retail, there's an online operations group that's very interested in revenue-related uh, data. Sure. Um, it's very real time. I spoke to one uh, was actually in manufacturing and said, I have to operate, um, uh, optimize my entire business every hour. Okay. No VI wow. vendor on earth understands <laughs> yeah. that. Right. And that was really a user experience management, included security, by the way. Sure. Right? Yeah. So there have, uh, but look at healthcare and, and the, you, it, it's, the personas are different. So, right. You know, and you really need to understand, it. once again, it's not a generic, even internal personas right. are different. Well, and that's kind of, I guess, where I was going. It was, mm -hmm. you know, how that kind of came about into two buckets, you know, because 
there's different roles at different times right. and, and whatnot. So it's kind of curious how, how that naturally broke itself out. It, it's a good, I mean, actually, if, to really look at it, it's probably about 40 buckets of different. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you really wanted to, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Dennis, it's been a pleasure chatting with you this morning. I mean, hearing about that research is really interesting. So, uh, I'm glad. Um, it was, I think, in sympathy anyway with yeah. some of the things <laughs> yeah, we've been true. hearing yes, here. Yeah. <laughs> so. so thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you.